Hi guys, welcome in. Just getting myself situated. Okay, so here is my little setup and you can see so this is a smaller canvas. This is 11 by 14, but I'm using a 12 by 16. So you can scale it to make it a little bit bigger or smaller. And I have my usual paints, acrylic paints of phthalo blue, bright red, bright yellow, black and white. But this is the non-orange kind for this red. And uh, you can use the orange kind for the red if you really wanted to, because there's really mostly kind of muted tones, very you know, the style with the group of seven, they have a lot of really natural looking colors, muted tones of colors, not too vibrant overall. And um, if you want to take a look at the original, you can always just take a look and get more inspiration on your style and how you interpret it. So this is my interpretation of it. And I am also suggesting <clears throat> to have on the side, you don't have to, if you don't like mixing too much color, this is a lot of mixing of colors with uh, just browns, lots of yellow ochre colors. So yellowy, yellow ochre on the brown and the green side. And raw umber and burnt umber is great to have as well. So if you like shortcuts, use these colors. Hey, welcome in guys. Welcome Linda and other people who've painted with me before. So this is gonna stay up forever. You can pause, take your time throughout this video and I'm thinking we can get started. So I have my water cup, paper towel. In terms of brushes, you can use and start with any one of these larger brushes here. I like to use more of the flat brush to start. So I'm gonna use that one. And I'm going to, for my medium brushes, I have a medium flat and a medium round, but number four. So you can use either one of those is fine. And then for a detail brush, number two, number zero, both of them I have handy. Okay, so I'm not going to use a million brushes. I'm just going to use those ones. All right, so just dipping this water into my water cup, getting it a bit dry after, just dabbing it dry. And we're going to start with a lot of background stuff. So we want to get the sky going. And the sky has a little bit of that grayish undertone. So we're going to start with actually a little bit of white. So you can get it prepared just in this area. Like water and white is all you need. And you can do as much or as little as you want. I'm just going pretty much to the side. You can use a generous amount of white because when we put paint on top and we put a little bit of our undertone of the greeny gray colors kind of slightly pink in here too as much work as you want to put into it it's going to blend in with the white and it's going to make it a little bit lighter a little bit softer overall so i just do that really quick at the top and in terms of the sky we kind of want to just do a little slice of our canvas so i might have mentioned if you have a pencil it's really good to draw some of your horizon, just so you have an idea. So up here I have about a quarter of my canvas, I would say, somewhere around here. I'm thinking this will be more of my sky. Probably can't see my pencil marks, but that's okay. I can, it helps for if you put it down. I'm not washing off this brush. So what we're going to do right away is just pull a little bit of, just a little bit of white to the side. Again, we're trying to keep it really light because in contrast with everything else, this is the lightest part of our painting overall, maybe for some of the canoe exceptions, but up here it's really light. So I just had fun with some of the colors. I just wanted to mix some bits of random colors, maybe some, let's start with a little touch of red in here, just slightly pink. 
So you only want the smallest of dots. And if you're thinking pink is um, not your color, you don't want to add it in. You don't have to. It's just a color that I thought I saw in there very, very lightly. And, and you can also, I like to add a touch of black in here. So this is where we start muting our tones. Usually black or brown will give it a more muted tone. So you can see very off-white, no longer too vibrant. It's got like a muted pinky tone. So using a bit of my flat brush, it gives it almost like a purple look. See how it looks a bit purpley? And I'm just kind of flicking it over to the side, a bit random. You can kind of flick it upwards so you have more direction instead of straight across. Kind of gives it a very clouded look. Very nice. Welcome back, Deborah. So I just did that a few times in over here. You don't need to worry too much. So after that, I don't even wash off my brush. A lot of the time, I don't wash off my brush with the group of seven paintings, um, normally done in oil. But if you like the textured look, you want more generous amount of paints, a little bit thicker texture. And washing off the brush is probably not done too often, especially with the colors here. So right from here, let's just add a touch of a little bit of yellow, see what comes out of it, and a touch of blue, or you can add a touch of yellow ochre, so a little dot of that. A bit green in color, but I do like to take a bit more black here. So you see how I'm taking little tiny dots of all my colors? Because if you take too much, it's just gonna turn really, really dark, and that's no fun. I'm gonna take a bit more yellow. So more yellow and not too much blue at all. A bit of a gray, greeny undertone. And if you're finding it's too dark, put just wash off your brush, take a bit more white with it. And let's put in a little bit of that. So you can see uh, when I put that in, it is kind of dark. So I'm going to wash this off. You can wipe off a lot of the paint and just add more white. Or if you have too much paint in your brush, maybe just quickly wash that off. Take that color again with a bit more white and you'll find that it comes off a bit softer. And I'm just using more of the tip of my brush in between some of that pinky purple that we just made. And flicking it off to the side a bit here and there short little strokes as well. I like to just not blend it in. I like to leave it like that so it looks a bit clouded. So you can do as much as you want up here and just have fun, like don't overthink it. See what comes out of it. It's your interpretation of the painting, your style. And at the very bottom you can I like to take a big scoop of white and just get little essence of these colors brighter at the bottom overall. So that's that's just me. And I think in the painting, it was a bit brighter overall at the bottom, a bit more cloudy towards the top. There, so I think I have a good amount So you can always go back and put in a bit more of your pinky purple. Remember a dot of black to your bright, bright pink gives it a purpley undertone. And it's just a lovely color for some soft cloudiness in the sky. I personally like it. I just go back over that really quick before I decide that I'm done playing around with the sky. And a little tip as well. If, you're, if you put a little bit too much, just take plain white and actually just make clouds with white, plain white on your brush. You don't have to wash it off and just do little flicks like that too. And it just dilutes some of the color, softens up some of the areas that you want to. I'm gonna leave this alone and we can wash it off now or just leave your brush. You don't need to. We're going to start with getting our base coat of where the water is going to sit. But let's first draw out where a canoe is going to sit so you're more happy with the layout. So I'm just going to use my pencil. And don't forget, you can pause this too. So if you 
find that you like working at a really slow pace. You like to take your time. Nothing wrong with that. So we have part of our sky. Now we have a bit of an island too. See, we have, um, we want to put just a bit of some mountains and hills. So you can always go into the sky, but I want to just go about an inch or maybe a little bit less if you have a smaller canvas. Going across, just parallel to your skyline, that horizon. And I've washed off my brush for now just because I'm not going to be using it as I pencil this in. I don't want paint drying on my brush. Then from here, we have an island, and you can see that it's also about an inch or about something like that lower, lower down. So we're going to put this in right around here. Okay. I'm just going to press a tiny bit harder so you guys can see. And this part that's coming in, it's stopping right around halfway into the middle of the canvas. That's a good point to stop. And of course, down here we have where canoe's going to sit. We have some island that we just need to have it resting on. I just did some bumpy, a little bit of a lift up here, and then back down. So you can you can do as much as you want in the original. I think there's a bit more, so you can add more to your liking for more of an island to show. And let's draw out the canoe because I think painting water on top of where your canoe is going to sit seems like too much extra work. It seems like you're painting somewhere that you don't really need to paint. So drawing or, or painting around your canoe so that it's blue around it and you don't have to do 10 layers of white to make it bright again and yellowy. Let's do that. So we can see we have this little shrubbery here on the side, a bunch of sticks and everything collected, and the canoe stretches pretty far across. So what I want to do here is just have it come down here on an angle. I'm just doing a nice long stretch here and then a little flick upwards. Just that little flick going up like that. Okay, so you don't, you have to also keep in mind the, the amount of space that we have between this parts. It's about an inch and a half to two inches. So you don't want a whole ton of space left. You want to go pretty big here. It's right in the foreground. So it's going to be pretty, pretty big overall. This, and then right on the end, you can just see has a nice curve. Just like that. Okay, so it's easy to make this bigger, especially when you pencil it in, you can get an idea on how big you want it to be. So when you start painting it on, it's better to draw it out first than to rely on doing it later. And then we have a, from this corner, let's just put a line coming down See how it swoops and it becomes parallel to this one here. All right. And then I have all the space for my water. So I feel like this is a good amount. And then this is covered by the sticks and leaves over here. Maybe I'll have this come up a little bit more, some more of the land showing. Okay. After that, we have it roughly drawn out. Let's start putting in some of the, the start of our water and then we can put in our island. I like to put it in after I do my water. In terms of brushes, let's just use 
the medium or you can use a round something like this i like to use this one let's start with this one dip it in the water we're going to start off with a little bit of a kind of like a lighter purpley color so if i take a scoop of red just a small amount little touch of blue we don't want it to be that bright we, we want the grayish tone so we're going to add in some white in here and a little dip of black you can add more black to your liking too so very grayish overall and you can still see some of that purple Just mixing this and it's still quite dark because when I start putting this here, um, I'm just going a little bit below where that island is up here. You can see how dark it is overall. So I just need a bit more white. And I'm just going to go back and forth, start doing shorter strokes back and forth, get a little bit of disturbance happening in the water. Just a little bit of white, mostly on my brush with that bit of purple underneath. So I'm mostly grabbing white from here so that it's not too dark. It just picks up a little bit of that purple on my brush and it becomes much more lighter gray purple. So I stop in this area roughly. They're going right up to the line, just touching and overlapping the line at the top. And I'm not washing this off. So we can start blending the blue pretty much right over top immediately. Um, I'm going to take now into the same spot, take a scoop of blue just a scoop of your plain blue, add it in, and an extra dip, like a pea size of black, I would say. Start with that, see how it looks. Yeah, nice and gray in tone, perfect. I'm gonna use a touch of water as well, pick up some paint, go across this line where the island's sitting. And in the original, you'll see that there's actually a lot of strokes here. So this is it's kind of curved, really short and curved. But we want to get this filled in to start. So I would say fill it in pretty solid, shorter strokes again, kind of back and forth to get a little bit of that texture going. I don't want it too smooth. Water, paint paint around here. I'm just using a ton of paint on my brush. I don't mind using a lot of paint. Around this part, just tracing around it. So I'm going to fill in all of this area. When you get a little bit less paint on your brush, so I'm trying to keep it all pretty um, horizontal. <laughs> so all pretty horizontal, shorter strokes, lots of overlap as I fill this in. And then when you get a little bit less paint, just get a few strokes going in and mixing with this purple up here. Right, so you have a bit of a flow between the colors and do much shorter streaks at the back so way shorter lines more like dabs kind of light little flicks so it looks like it's further away so there's less there's um the waves are not as big so you see them a little bit more distinctively down here there, so i don't mind going over the same spots it gives it a nice bit of blend a bit of more blue in here mixing in with it
And then I'm going to wash this off for now. Okay, so after this, now we can we can just let this sit just for um, I think maybe a little bit longer, and uh, we'll start making the hills and mountains up here with some trees, a little forest, in just a second. Okay, to start our mountains at the back, let's start with something a little bit lighter, which is more of just a highlight going through here before we do some little bit of darker trees. We're gonna pull some yellow to the side. Actually, um, what I like to do a lot of the time, instead of mixing fresh all the time, just to take a little bit of yellow and add it into your previous greeny color that you kind of made before, mostly white here. I don't want too much yellow on my brush, then it's just obviously yellow. Then touch of black. And only a dot, maybe a dot of your gray blue, that's fine. You take a little dot of that, you get some light greenish gray color. So the hills, I think I'm using more of the tip of my brush and just Flowing it more diagonally. I'm just gonna flow it down more diagonally here. Off to the side. I know that we're not gonna see much over here. So you don't need to go to the very edge. And if you happen to go higher into your sky because you want less sky, that's fine. It just gives it a nice soft color. There we go, just a little layer of that. And, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of this light gray blue I was just using. All right, so you can add a touch more white to it if it's still really dark, right? So I, you can see I've added a bit more white to it. So it's not as dark as here. It's a bit of a gray blue color. Feel free to add another dot of black if you need to. And this is optional if you want to put this in, but it's got a little bit of this blue kind of going into the background here, just above some of the hills or a little hint of this color into the sky. So I just go along the top a bit, drag it down a bit here and there. You can see I mostly glaze it along the top. and a bit more coming down where this island's going to sit. Let's bring it up a bit closer. You can see I have very light, it looks yellowy more and a bit gray but it only has a dot of blue with that mountains. And then I took my gray blue with more white right from each took here. And I just used the tip of my brush and just it was a bit uh, messy with it. So I wasn't too perfect, kind of glazed it across, dragged it down a smidge and a bit more onto the side. This was just slightly above the hills or right on top of it. 
and I still haven't washed off my brush because we're going to be using and going into some greens, some darker greens. And you can actually start using a bit of yellow ochre to make some of your green to already mute your color. But I like to mix right over top of what we've already been mixing. So into the same spot, we just use this gray kind of greenish tone. It's still a bit wet, which is great. I'm gonna add a little corner of my brush of blue and yellow again. Uh, maybe a couple of them. We're going to get a little bit darker and then another corner of a brush or two of black. So you have to just look at your colors and see if you're happy with how it looks overall. I don't like things too vibrant in this painting. That's just not the style. And you know, I like their take, Tom Thompson's take on this one. Uh, so more black than you may think, but it's it's uh, it looks a little bit lighter only because we've been mixing on top of where the light green is because it has white. So I'm just going to wipe off a little extra paint. I don't want it too clumpy. And just see how it goes. Let's go along the bottom here to start. Very light, just a little bit wispy, you know, very delicate, not too... Not too much of like an actual line. So if you did too much, just wipe it off with your finger or blend it out. Maybe put some more brightness on top again. I'm just going across here. And adding in a little bit of this green coming up along some of the mountain here next to this blue. Just little accents coming in, mostly along the bottom. Tiny bit more of an outline. And then actually from here, take a bit more blue and yellow again. Get a little bit darker once more as you add more in. We're not adding any more white, more black, and you can even add in a touch of red to give it even more of a brownish green tone. So it's even darker and more uh, with that red, it gives it a slightly brownish tone. You'll see when I start going on the side. So since my island's gonna end somewhere around here, maybe what I'll do is I'll just go a little bit further in You can use more of the thin side of your brush. Use more of the tip of it or I switch to a detailed brush and start making little flicks or pressing to make just with the full vertical width of it. Making some forest little trees to start. We'll do a little bit up here too. Along that little shoreline. Yeah, I'm just kind of dabbing and pressing. It gives it already some texture. And I'll wash this off for now. I can switch to a number two brush. I've been using this medium brush for quite a while on a small little area. I like to introduce a little bit of yellow ochre. Not exact yellow ochre. I mean, if you have it, you can use it, but with maybe with a bit more white into it. That's yellow, a bit of red. So you have about three parts yellow, maybe one part red, mostly yellow. 
And sometimes mixing on top of say your yellowy green color is just fine. So that's what I've just done. Put it right in there. So you're gonna be adding in some white in there and a dip of black. And it starts making it look like yellow ochre, um, kind of brownish too, but very yellowy brown, very mucky in color. So you can introduce this color as little accents onto your hill so it's not all just one color unless you're totally in love with how it looks and you don't want to keep touching it so this is great to add in as little accents and i actually use this so with more white added, just in case it's really, really dark, just take more white in here, water, and use this brush to add in some little accent colors of this color. So it's like reflecting into your water, very short little flicks, remember that. right over top of the purple into the water and some of it coming into your blue too. You can say I do a lot, you can overlap as well. Get started. So take a step back and look at it. Um, the color that you're adding in, you can always, like I said, add more white if it's coming off a little too strong. But it's probably not too noticeable as much as you, you know, as much as you think it's going to be. So I don't mind going over top of my boat a little bit here and there so that it's like the water hasn't stopped at the boat. You just want to imagine that it's continuing a little bit before you place your boat in. So I can always add more of this if I feel like it, because we're going to be going over it with more dark blues. But I think that does an interesting take on colors reflecting, really nice colors. It looks a bit golden. So let's go a bit closer for where the background island is, just to finish that up a little bit more so you can see some more of my details unless it, you can just do things that you're feeling if you have if you see trees being somewhere else or different colors do those colors but generally from trees here I'm going to take into a gray blue that we had over here on the side a bit more black big scoop of yellow and I get this, see how this is really dark, murky green? Perfect. Let's start with this. I'm going to do little flicks coming up or little dabs. So short and tall trees in sections. They don't have to all just be in a straight line. Some can have more in some spots than others. Darkening up a little bit at the bottom here. Or you can go back to your flat medium brush and do the same technique we were doing before. Kind of little flicks. You can also do little dabs for some more of a shrubbery tree kind of look, very textured overall. I just do a lot of it. So have fun with different greens. You can, I didn't really show you the basic green yet because it's pretty easy. You're just going to take 
roughly equal parts blue and yellow or more yellow than blue, depending. If you take more blue than yellow, you get more of a teal look. So this is just, didn't wash off the brush, just keep mixing. You can mix over top of previous colors. And I fully encourage that because you get those muted tones, the undertone of other gray tones and stuff like that. So just mix right over top of something and add this in. It's kind of nice to see how it comes out. This is more of a dark forest green or a viridian green, kind of similar to that because I have a lot of gray tones. So a little pop of actual dark green color is nice. And there's two light little touches at the top, just little dots, some of the trees. So I'm gonna let that dry just for um, a little bit because when you have a lot of wet paint on here, sometimes it doesn't look as opaque. That's okay if you come back to it, you can add a bit more. I like to add actually brown for you in there. We haven't fully mixed a brown yet. So we're gonna add a little bit more up here in just a little bit. However, if you need to clean up your tree line, just clean it up with some mostly white with a touch of any of the colors you've been using. You can even use a bit of green if you wanted or that pinky purpley color. And you can just clean up the line, have it, make sure you're just making it more solid. Kind of blurring the line away. Looks a bit like a shore as well. And I use a generous amount of paint. So you just take a nice big scoop and just do tiny little lines horizontally. And you just blob it in, not blending, no blending. Now I have more of a, looks more like a shoreline, some waves back here in the distance. And now we're going to add in this area over the island over here. Start getting that going while this is drying so you can come back and do your little touch-ups when it's dry. So if you need to, before we start that, you can just take plain white. This is a little idea to add. Um, plain white or off purpley pink white, sure. Even yellow ochre, something more on the white side. You can just put this in, add another little layer of waves in this more purple area, getting into your blue area. Okay. So for me, I'm gonna switch back to my flat medium brush and start on this island. So first of all, uh, we're going to start with all of the green and you can see that down here, it's more of an overlap behind the green. So let's do that. Lots of different green colors, but for me, I like to start off much darker and then add more highlights of lighter greens. And then we'll do more of the brown branches and tree stems. So super dark green. You kind of have one going already. I'm gonna take a good piece size more of black, first of all, yeah. And then, you know, something like yellow and blue again. It kind of looks a bit more on the black side. Okay. When I turn it, it's got not too much color shining through, which is good. And you can always add the slightest dot of white if you find that when you start painting it, it's just way too dark for your liking. But you can see it's pretty dark. Okay, let's be careful here because we want to just make sure that we're putting what looks like more of a forest and trees and some gaps of the background and the sky showing through in between some of the leaves.
you can see on here, we have some gaps in between some of the trees. And I like to start with my furthest tree. So we want to establish where that is. Once you establish it, you can add maybe one more, but it's nice to start with the smaller tree that's right here. So I know it seems to be, we'll say right around here. Let's just put it right there. Yeah. So thin line coming up. There we go. Starting from where that line is and then just start adding pretty close to it, another gap, another line. And then as you, as you keep getting over, it's hard to see which one is a tree, which one's not. It's kind of uh, gets a little bit convoluted with, with in that sense, but I'm going to do two tall trees next to each other, which are the ones that look like it's starting to merge into more of a forest. And then after that, we have straight, mostly just greens. I'm going to put this thick layer, nice gap in between, and get that started. So hopefully it's going pretty well for us so far. And this almost looks black, but actually when I look at it now, it, it does have that undertone green. So it's fine for me, but you can always take a bit more yellow and blue just in case with a dot of white if you're not happy with the color. So these trees are, for group of seven, very windy, very, they look like they're actually moving. So that's the great thing about this painting. You can switch to a number two. I like to use this brush on the corner, get a little tiny dot at the top here. And then I just kind of sway it, kind of dab down the middle at the same time and just sway it side to side, flick it sometimes a little bit more in some spots than others, just to start. So really narrow at the top. There's not a whole ton of leaves sitting up here at first. But you can see as I go back down into this and just go back over it, if it makes it better for you, switch to your number two. So I'm just going to switch to that really quick. And you can just kind of group some leaves together so it looks like they're blowing this way and that way. Look it out. Fill the center a little bit more. You don't want too many gaps. You can flip it out. You can always make it bigger. Just start with this. Make sure you have that little pointy top. And usually it looks a bit more clumped. So it has more of a, it's more of a unit with leaves moving together in a clump. And sometimes you just have to hang it down. So they're not all perfectly straight across. Some of them are hanging lower down than others. That's the start of one of them. Let's move to, back to my medium brush, the next part. Going down the middle. And you can see actually next to these trees, they're pretty much touching each other. So you can have it so that there's little gaps in between some of the leaves here and there. And when you get down towards the bottom here, it's pretty much all filled in. So I just dab. I just still do that texture, dab it. I don't make it too smooth. Mixing a little bit more paint. And up at the top, we have more of our trees. You can see actually there's a lot going on. There's a lot of windiness and uh, it's kind of abstract looking. It's hard to tell which tree is what. So that is good because then you can just start making an abstract take on how you think this is going to look. So 
mostly filling it in, but still keeping in mind that we're leaving some gaps. And I do have a sneaky trick on how to make the illusion that there's this pieces of sky showing through. But let's try our best to show some of that still. You know, interpretations are always going to be different. It's never going to be exactly the same. No one's going to say that it's wrong. As long as you try to capture some of the style with these clumps of leaves and gaps in between. So it's not too much you're making realism. You're doing impressionism, interpretation of it. Down here, pretty much all filled in again. Just do the same thing. However you want to fill this in, I'm still dabbing. Keep mixing a bit more. So as I get into this cluster over here, we have the dark green fun stuff. I'm just going to roughly fill it in so I can see at the top some dark patches in here with a big gap between this tree and over here. So I'm just going to fill this a lot in for now. And then we're going to switch green. So just get most of this area filled in. Still leave some gaps. You can always add more. That's easy to do. Just taking away and trying to add sky into it afterwards. It can be done. I've done it, but um, not the most fun thing to do because you have to wait for things to dry. You can't do it right away. I'm not going to wash off this brush. I'm just going to let it sit here for a few seconds. And then we'll start making a new green. Actually, you can use this to add on top of your trees here if you think they're dry enough and you need a dark green added in. I'm still waiting, not going to do it. More of this one here. All the different greens going in. We're going to be adding in more highlights in here. So let's put in more of a, it's almost like a yellow ochre green. So if you have, remember this sort of color, you can just pick up and mix into here or um, in your dark green, just add more yellow and white, for example. More yellow, white. You can kind of tell that it's, it's, I want a bit more black. It's not as, mucky as I want it to be. And you need that red. It gives it a brownish color. So that was maybe a bit too much red. That's okay. I can always add more yellow and some white. It still looks like a very muddied yellowy green. Let's use this. First of all, oh, I touched blue somehow. So what I've done here is more on the edges with your maybe detailed brush if you're more comfortable with that. I'm just trying to touch up on some highlights towards the edge. Like the light is almost hitting some of the sides here. And the more of the center, you know, the centers of the trees, it's much darker. Whereas on the edges, it appears a little tiny bit lighter. You can go right on the edges, touch up on some color for highlight. But at the top here, seems like there's some highlight up here too. And you can do stuff like squiggly lines. I notice that in part of the interpretation and impressionism of it, sometimes there's like S shapes, you know, soft squiggly lines to give it more movement and texture overall, unless you want to stick with the dabbing.
And some in here to kind of go along the side of this really dark green area. Get it a little bit lighter overall. Still have not washed this up. I'm just going to leave. I use most of the paint on my brush. And we do have a little bit of more vibrant green in the sense. So let's take our, I just, and by the way, you can tell that I'm actually taking dirty yellow, dirty colors. Nothing is perfectly clean usually. So more yellow and just a dot of blue, unless you already have blue in there. And some white again. I think I'll add a touch for blue. I have enough yellowy greens. So this, when I put this in, it's actually, see how it's way too green? Not a big fan. Still needs a bit of black or muddied green somewhere else. So you're just having fun with the colors and that mixing. Just getting a little bit of this color in here and a little bit off to the side, just in this area. Gonna put a little bit kind of swiping off to the side. Well, wherever else you want to add it in. Add little hints of this green here and there into your forest for more texture, more color. Nice to have. So you can do different angles. Up here, it was mostly smooth up and down strokes. Over here, more dabs, horizontal lines, some squiggly lines coming down vertically. And you can easily just put in more black on your brush and just darken up that top corner and on the side, just once more, or in any spots that need to be darkened. If I just take plain black, you can see there's a nice dark spot separating. If you're trying to be technical here, just so you know. Just more separating these areas, more darkness in between some of the trees. So I can always put more color in here later on. I am washing this off now. And hopefully we are Loving the technique and the different colors we're doing. It does take, it is a quite a process. You don't just whip together a painting. Especially when you're recreating a famous painting. The amount of work and passion put into it. Take the breaks if you need to. But I think worth it at the end, you'll see it comes together really nice. So that just needs a little breather. But um, it still can be a bit damp when we put in our sticks into for the trees. It's kind of nice when it's still a bit wet when we put the brown in. I just don't want it completely wet for this next step. But let's just finish up um, a little bit over here with any anything you need to do. Any greens, any green colors, like whatever you've used already, you just add it in. Do a little dabs with your vertical width of the... Medium brush, it tends to do a really good job. You can also add in some brown, some more red into your green. Give it a, that's how you make brown, by the way. Red into any of your greens, it gives it a brownish tone. Dark green, and you get more of a dark brown. Just a touch more yellow here. It's, it's looking a bit purple. So if it's looking too purple, just a bit more yellow is what it needs. And then 
add in some earthy browns into the trees. I haven't washed off my brush. I'm just mixing a random light green to add in in terms of color. But I think I'll stop after this so I don't go overboard. I have a lot of trees on the shoreline, so I'm just maybe getting rid of some of them with my original mm. island color. Okay, this is just more of a dark, dark, similar to this, the dark green that we started with over here. Light little touches with the corner if you want to do little trees coming up some of your hill here. Lightly tapping so you get really small ones. So something that I want to do before we finish up this area is we have to finish all of this water. So the water is more, we're just putting in a lot of dark blues and you can add more black to your liking, right? Because the original actually is pretty, pretty gray, pretty dark. One thing you can start with is just plain blue. So you can see how it's going to look if you add in plain blue. Really, really bright in color. I'm just going right underneath here. Help darken up the areas. And I actually like to use this to make it a bit more sparse actually, right around this area where it's going into the light. So there's a lot of shadow over here. Okay, so lots of this dark blue colors with more black, of course. And then a little bit less kind of more of the white showing through here. I still add it in, but more spaced out. Hopefully that makes sense. You don't need to go too crazy with this color. Just a little bit of this blue. And you can actually start doing little scoops is what I call it, commas more of a wavy look, lots of movement in the water. I am going to put in white with it, black, black, and a touch of white too, more gray. Keeps it all with the theme. Let's put some over here. Add more black over here, keep it even darker. Let it pick up some of that blue. You don't mind going into the boat just a bit. You can still see the boat's going to be here. I'm going to just, just do lots of overlap. 
I'm doing this pretty fast because I'm not trying to spend too much time on thinking about each stroke. I'm more trying to get the layers here. The layers are what really count, not blending it. And use a touch of water if you're finding your brush is a bit too dry. As I'm doing this as well, try to keep it a little bit smaller when you're doing this color, this dark blue color, into more of the top area. So that you're doing more bigger ones down here, and then little tinier ones up here. Really touching the canvas is fine. So to blend this out kind of right away, not really blending it, but getting rid of really obvious little lines back here, taking more white on my brush. See, it's a very silvery, light gray color. Just slightly go over top of these. Little flicks. And a few over onto the side, as you can see. Some light seeping through over here. Now you have a little undertone of that dark blue that we just put in. More grayish overall. And some bigger ones down here. So it does take a little bit of playing around to your liking. And adding any more of that golden color is just fine too, should you need to. That was more of a yellow ochre um, yellow with a dot of red and some black. Kind of has a bit of an undertone of green. So you can certainly, when you put that in, sometimes you get little green bits in the color. Sometimes it turns a bit teal or something like that on top of some of your blue, which is nice. And when this is more dry, I do add more highlights of really light gray blue, or um, you can just take plain white, but just highlights onto the water. So I'm washing this off for now. And with my number two brush, I'm going to take just white for now. Yeah, white. And start touching up with some short streaks here while it's still a bit wet. Give it more of a highlight just surrounding this you know, where the corners where it gets really dark around here, a little bit more white kind of shining over around here this way. Water. 
Or if you happen to have too much white, just take your blue and black. And put that in. It gives a lot more movement. I've spaced out more gaps around the light area. So it looks like it's got a lot more waves movement and then it's definitely super dark shadow over on this side. So take your time with that. Especially with the yellow ochre, it really helps balance out the colors. So I do encourage you to make sure you have a bit of this in to your water. Okay. Just wait a minute and we'll start with our next step. You can always Get a blow dryer and blow dry your painting to make it dry faster. We're going to go back into this island. Should be still a bit damp. It's not fully dry. So in terms of color, again, yellow ochre seems to be popular because of, see how everything has this yellowy brown, like it's just getting over autumn type of look, or maybe it's getting into autumn. So... Here is what we do. We take two parts yellow, one part red. And as you can tell, I'm mixing on top of, you can mix on top of a green, off of a previous brown over here, or yellow ochre. Mostly yellow, a little bit of red. It already looks a bit brown when you're touching other colors. It just, there it is, it's already brown. But you can add more red if you don't want it too yellowy and just a touch of black. It gives it more of a brownish tone and a little bit of white. Not too much black because I want more of the orangey yellow color to show. So you can always add more yellow and a touch of red and some white to give it more of a orange look and warmer color. Water and just twirl your paintbrush into it so that it stays a bit thin with some of the water. Let's see how this looks. Let me start painting this on. Um, so we have some sticks just coming down through here. Not fully filled, like they're not consistent. They're not too consistent. So sometimes you only see pieces here and there. Mostly vertical, as you can see. Maybe press the bottom. Maybe another one just next to it, stop and then keep it going. Maybe a little bit of a tree stump down here. Coming up. Sometimes it can be a bit on an angle. So something is tilting over just a little. And I'm just mostly filling from around the bottom, flicking it upwards. Maybe add a touch more red on your brush. Get it a bit fiery looking. It has a bit more of a fiery looking wood in the background. So you're just adding more red on top of your brush and it gives it more of a red brown. And then after this, we can make this very obvious little tree just kind of sitting in here. It's really, it's really fun. Um, let's start with this dark, more of a, not too dark, not too light color of a green. So I'm gonna take a bit of this brown actually, 
add yellow, a bit of red. Sorry, don't know why I did that. I meant to take blue. So this is brown, yellow, touch of blue into the brown. So it already, when I add it into the brown, see it's already muddied. Great. Start with this. You can always add a touch of black if you need it a bit darker, right? And this tree is so interesting. It's very squiggly, you know? Squiggly, a little bit, you know, it has like the tiny, more pointed top. Actually reminds me a bit like an ice cream, you know, those soft lines. But anyways, and a little bit thicker into the middle, thinner again at the bottom, very squiggly. A little bit more heavy onto one side, so it looks like it's not a perfect ice cream little pour. Anyway, so that was my analogy on this little guy right off to the side. You can add more green covering some of your branches if needed, or any brown that you're not a fan of. You just add it in, dab it. And there's nothing wrong with taking dark green again to shadow in between some of the trees, especially at the bottom. Make sure you get some darkness contrast in here, really. You can add plain black into the middle of this tree. Keep it lighter on the edges, but I'm going to highlight it a bit more, make it stand out with more yellowy green. So I just blobbed in some black right into the very center of it. Right here, it kind of blends in with the background right now until I highlight it with some lighter yellow green. do want to start making all of that little island wood stuff, a bit of like a sandy color, mostly white. So when I take white, some very white, you can actually take a little touch. When you take a touch of brown, you get pretty much the color that we want. So if you take a touch of this brown, maybe, around, maybe this previous brown, you can add in an extra little dot of yellow if you need it more yellowy in tone, if it's looking a bit too red. So let's take a touch of that brown. Let's add a touch more until basically I'm happy with the way it looks. Take a bit more yellow. Still very, very bright overall. Don't forget to balance it out with a bit of red if it's still looking too green. Okay, I'm gonna start with that. It's kind of like an eggshell white to me. So let's go along the bottom. Just get this line pretty much in. Right towards the edge. And then doing diagonal strokes. Just maybe bring it down a little more. diagonal strokes especially on the side here we have a bit higher pieces coming in this is just a base coat so this is one color to start Have a little stump coming up into this tree. So what's insert? Uh, what's interesting about this color is it's overall very similar to things we've been using. Say, for example, back here in your sky, if you want to add some into your sky. 
for more color. It's also something you can put in to add more gaps in between the trees. So you can put maybe a smaller brush will do the trick. But see in here, you can add little circles, little blobs of color. Or enhance the gaps a little bit more. Detail brush, you can just put it in, rub it in. So using my detailed brush again, the number two, wash that off. Now we're going to use more of a burnt umber, or sorry, raw umber, not burnt umber, raw umber. That is just a simple dark brown. I can make this brown on top of any color really, but I think I'll just mix it right on top of an existing brown just for fun. More red and yellow about equal parts and a nice big scoop of black and you have a dark brown. So if you want it darker, just add more black. I think this is fine. Water, pick up some of the paint. And let's start, while it's still a bit wet, let's start separating some of these to make it look like there's a bit more texture, more rocky formation. So I'm just going right in between more of the tip of my brush and along the bottom just to darken it. Blobbing it in. And go around some of the edges, for example, here to give it some more color and texture along the sides. I'm using a pretty generous amount of paint. Stuff coming up from the bottom, a bit more diagonal than before. Sometimes I just blob it in but it mixed with some of this light cream color. Let's go a bit closer. I'm just adding some of that color in. to wash this off and actually take some orange. Two parts yellow, one part red. Oops. A little dot of white. And then you can add in this orange as a nice extra color to complement some of the brown because it's when you add black to it, it just turns brown. I'm just placing this in, interpreting on where to add some color. I don't want too much of one color in any one place, but maybe to soften up other colors around it, some dark brown, put some orange into it, into the light cream color we put. And while that's still a bit wet, I have a tree stump here. 
don't want to play around with it too much um, without washing off the brush we're going to take our yellow and a dot of our green some white so it's yellow and a dot of our mucky green and then let's just outline very roughly so nothing overly outlined this unique and fun tree that's over here on the side some swirliness So that is something, maybe some curls and different color in here. Okay. Awesome. Now let's let this dry. So just to finalize more of our water, I'm going to take mostly black and a touch of blue. So you could just take mostly black and no blue at all. Just go right along the bottom. Nice long line, a couple of little streaks off to the side here. Put some in. in this corner, it always darkens it up a bit more. This is just my detailed brush actually. Any spots you want to darken up, deepen up. A bit more spaced out as you get in towards the middle, but a lot more concentrated over onto this side. And I'm going to highlight with a very light gray blue, the blue white in a dot of black or dot of gray blue that you just used. Use some of that, take a bit more white actually. See how this looks. You know what, I'm gonna take more white. I want it to be more bright overall. Now I'm going to make sure that this looks more like a highlight on the waves. Compress a little bit more and harder with your brush towards the bottoms here. Lighter towards the top, not too much up here overall. Or just plain white. I'm just going over around these areas with some of my super dark blue, blue and black, basically equal parts of those colors, just to shadow a little bit along the bottoms of them. Keep it nice and dark overall. This is more grayish color because it's more gray tone overall, but you can keep it just regular dark blue instead of adding too much black all the time. 
if you like more of the color to show. I'm just going right around all of these little highlights. And whenever you feel like you're done, you can move on to the next step. It's a little back and forth, basically until you're happy. Uh, what helps is taking that step back. I always want to let people know that that is the best way to really tell. There's more of my yellow ochre that I've decided to put more in, into the painting. Or the water. All right. Okay, so for the next step, let's start focusing on the bottom part here, getting this kind of filled in and starting to outline it, outline it, and um, any touch ups onto this island here you want to do. When it's a bit more dry, you can add more dark brown into it. I like to jump back and forth to things. Washing off my medium brush. And then we're going to use, I'm using a lot of, you can see it's a lot of different browns. I'm going to start with my similar color up here. Remember that bright, cream color, so mostly white with some touch of brown. And I don't mind touching other colors. Maybe a touch more yellow, more of that yellowy cream that you can kind of see into it. More yellow. All right. So, I'm going to place this in. We're going up to the boat. You can fill it all in. You can fill it in partly so you have some gaps because I know some gaps I want to have brown, darker brown. But I can, if you paint it all in, it's okay. And this is a great color to add into your water should you need to, if you haven't already, but it's pretty similar to what we've been doing with yellow ochre. Wash it off. So with the boat, let's get that pretty much filled in so we can place things over top, overlapping it. You can see it's very similar to what we have on the island. I'm going to start with my uh, white color, actually. So you could take dirty white if you wanted. When you take dirty white, you get exactly that. You get a bit of a dirty white. I'm just going to get this filled in. just along the edge of the boat, not inside or the frame, more along the side. Because when we paint over it, it's gonna have a bit of that undertone of some dirt and wear and tear, which is exactly what we want. And I picked up a bit of blue, which is fine too, because I can easily go over it afterwards, or you can just leave the blue there if you like it. So I like to add in my little bit of brown and some white. 
some of that. Add some of that in. And you can you streak it in on top of your wet white. Do some streaks as much as you want to. Go back over with white afterwards in spots that you want to keep more white. You can see I'm just giving it an off color, some dirty color, not perfectly white anymore. It's not supposed to be perfectly white. So here it is a bit closer and the light's trying to pick up more of the white, but it is there. So you do want to keep in mind that shadowing the bottom of your boat is a good idea. So if I take plain black on my brush while it's, this is still wet, it turns into a nice dark gray just at the bottom. Give it a little bit of an outline towards the side. And wipe off the extra paint. So you're going to wipe off your extra paint. And then kind of drag it up just a little bit for more of that shadow to look like it's kind of more of a gradient. So from dark to lighter towards the top. So you want to wipe off or even wash off your brush to do that. And you can drag it up just using the flat side of your brush because it picks up a lot of that white and off-white color you just put in there. Okay, so that has to dry before I can touch up on color, especially if you have blue in there, which you probably do. And I can focus on putting in more of the frame so that yellowy kind of mustard color some just basically I would say a yellow ochre. I'll show you it's pretty much the same thing. So the yellow ochre, remember, is yellow with a dot or two of red and a touch of black and maybe some white too. It's almost like it's looking brown. Let's go right up to the top. And this is just the first coat. So we're starting with the first coat because we have to fill in the middle of our boat. So from the, you can see the corner, it's not dipping down too much. You can have it a bit more straight across. It's going to overlap your water just fine. And we want to fill this in with a burnt umber this time. So that is burnt umber. You can take burnt umber and to make that is red, yellow, equal parts, maybe a touch more red with a, just a dot of black, small little dot of black and a little dot of white. And you get a red burnt umber. So let's fill this in. And I saw how it was Kind of filled in it has a little bit more strokes that you can see so you can make it smooth if you like it more smooth go right to the edge here it's going to be pretty much the same color with the pile of sticks and leaves on the side the dead branches just go right across and ends not too high up, so I'll be cutting some of that off, but here. You can do more vertical lines to show more of your strokes. A little bit more texture in here. So while I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit more, because I want to do a second coat, of course, just do, if you have anything that you need to go over with 
more white or light yellow ochre, just do it now because then your second coat will come off much brighter. So I'm just going over it one last time. slightly more defined. And I can use this same brown, so don't you don't need to waste it. Let's keep it to roughly fill in the bottom. Actually, I don't have much of a bottom here as I did over there, but that's okay. It's similar to what we're doing up here. So if you wanna add a little bit of this color up here too, feel free to do that. It's kind of a nice added warm color. Just kind of lightly dabbing it in, doing short little streaks to get that filled in. Even Darkening up the bottom is nice. Just like little touches, get some texture. down here, I'm just putting in streaks of color. So I'm just putting some, a little bit of this dark burnt umber a bit along the bottom here. Nothing too blended at all. A bit of this color going where the pile of dead leaves and sticks are going to sit. You can see coming from the bottom, we're just kind of dragging it up in little strips. Very interpretive, very kind of abstract too. So I didn't go all the way across. I just mostly did it right around here. It's kind of like a shadow that we're making. Looks a bit like a shadow. Gonna wash this off for now. Then I'm going to take black, it's black paint. And we have little strips in between. So right in between here, I'm just gonna add in some black paint in between, going into that red brown outside of it more towards the back of the boat for more darkness. You can go over that outline one more time to get it even darker overall. This is not supposed to stress you out. So I'm gonna leave it like this just to sit for now. Um, one little thing that you could add in is a bit more white, yellow, and red. So kind of like a light orange. Mix it on top of a lighter color somewhere. So it has a light orangey brown look. 
If you add a touch of black, it gives it that slight brown. And just touching up on in between the light area. So we're just going into the already shown light areas. Popping it back out. And I'm just using a chunk of paint as I do it. I'm not trying to blend as much. I like the different colors to show. And I think I'll use the same light yellowy brown color if you want to. It has a light little highlight on more of the left side of your trees up here. Just light little touches. You don't have to be a perfect outline. Just a couple little lines here and there to pop it out a little bit more. Maybe add more of a taller stick right here, which I saw in the painting kind of sticking out more. It's a bit more of a highlight. I also want to use this like your light cream color same color I'm just going to use that um, there's some business happening here it seems like driftwood into the water coming out on the side so if you want to add this in you can but you know if you're doing a recreation of a masterpiece it's in here. Some straight sticks, sometimes on an angle. Little branches sticking out if you feel like adding it in. Um, a little clump of it coming out to the side. And just do a second coat, I think, when it's more dry if it's picking up too much blue. So overall, we're getting places. This is quite a long one. I'm going to, we're going to finish up this boat, get it nice and rustic looking. And I just like to do small little touch ups sometimes, just adding extra layers because I did tons of layers. And I saw in the painting there was just a whole ton of each individual strokes noticeable into the water. This seems pretty dry. So the yellow ochre. So yellow ochre or making your own with yellow and a bit of red, white, black for that golden look. A bit more red. 
Don't add too much black. So water, going over the paint, put this back in. So it's a bit darker here, and then I'll add a bit more white on my brush as I bring this out a little bit more. Just for fun for in terms of different color and highlights showing through. It doesn't have to be perfect because that's what gives it that wear and tear look. This is a great color just to add anywhere else, you know, your water. What we've been doing in the water. So the lines that are going across, that's that cream color. So it's like the eggshell white. Um, the actual name for it is Naples yellow. So if you're looking for an exact color, maybe I should have said this before, but it is Naples yellow. And we've just been mixing it this entire time. White touch of yellow, touch of red or very light, light brown with more yellow into it. Ooh, Naples yellow. So when I use this, and with this Naples yellow, you can see this is a great, if you've just been getting that paint color and you just discovered it now in your little art kits, if you have an art kit, so if you have all these colors, you can touch up onto these driftwoods coming out over here. Okay, so this is our Naples yellow, and I'm using this to also put in the lines back here. So I have a line all the way kind of towards the back, pressing a bit harder. It's like, I saw the interpretation of it. It's kind of got some pairs of parallel lines happening. See, it's a bit on an angle too. A little bit closer to the front. Got a few streaks here, kind of close together. I don't mind if it picks up some of my brown either. So this is also great to put into your actual boat here for the off color. Um, but otherwise you can add more white just around, I would say just around the front, right, the very front, and then leave everything else rustic looking. A bit more white here. A 
and I'm going to take a light gray so you can just add a bit of black into it. Kind of like a medium light gray. And I'm going to just add this in, streak it a little bit at the back, get a bit of this color. Just a couple accents of this into just underneath where this trim is. Right around the side. So for more, any more additional rustic look things that you can add in is that dark gray, or you can just take black with some yellow, blue, dot of white, or your any light color, just to give it a bit more brightness. Something dark gray, green. And I just lightly went around the bottom of this gold color, the yellow ochre, a couple of streaks, Give it some chippings and keeps it pretty dark over on that corner. Looks a bit more chipped, kind of wood looking when you're doing it rustic like that. And you can feel free to add more of that throughout, just very lightly, maybe with less paint and a bit more water. Come in, Vicky. Okay, so let's do a lot of the sticks and dead trees up here. Let's start with that very prominent, just we know is like a cluster of stuff happening over here. I'm going to use my medium brush again. Grab your burnt umber to start or for me, I took a dark, dark gray, and then I added squiggles of light orangey colors, light orange browns, red and yellow. Actually, you can just mix right on top of the green. We're not using a ton of green anymore. It's mostly browns from here on out. So I'm just gonna mix right on top of my green, more red and yellow, and a dip of black for a dark brown. You can see I'm the kind of painter I am, very messy painter. All right, so let's just get this going. It's coming in here, just do really squiggly lines coming in. Just fill it in, not necessarily to the bottom. If you have very little space down here, then you can go definitely to the bottom. And you can use this really dark brown or touch ups on dark browns just around the area. So while this is drying, I am going to mix more white into this brown. Yeah, a couple scoops of white here. Get it a bit brighter, lighter overall. And for me, I'm not going to use this. Yeah, I'm not going to use this brush because I want to use um, number two. Let's see that. Unless you find that you're medium brush is really good with this inside it makes nice lines water paint and let's start placing in random twigs and sticks 
So what I did is I followed just around this area. Kind of a bit wobbly. Press harder at the bottom, just flick it out for a bit of a stump. goes basically to the top and it has a little twig branch sticking out. So you're gonna when you're making twigs you just want it to start from within the tree you just kind of flick out. You can do as much as these little twigs and trees as as you would like to, it, as there's actually quite a bit. Let's take a bit more. Down here we have a bit of stick coming up. branching out, just lightly pressing with the tip of my brush. It's almost like it's fanning out a bit. A lot of the branches are coming out more towards the bottom into a fanning out look. So I want to, let's slightly change it. I'm gonna switch back to a Naples yellow again. Naples yellow. Just gonna wash this off. Adding a dot of red in, because it does have a bit of a creamy look. When you're mixing it fresh, it was just more of a creamy, yellowy, almost with a dot of red. And um, let's test this out here. Yep. There we go. So it's a bit more yellowy. So some of it, I had some branches, they're not all exactly the same color. A little bit of a twig coming out down here. And I do complement each little branch afterwards with some more, with a different brown, just so it's not all exactly the same. And building off from here, let's take more yellow and red and black. Just a touch of black, get it into only a dot of black because I want it to be a bit more orangey looking. Okay, I can see more of that color. There we go. Use some of this. So this is where it's kind of coming into the middle of the painting. And we have another one next to it. So you want to with some water. It's a bit, a bit on an angle. It's actually stopping right behind the boat.
So pressing a bit harder at the bottom, just a bit, keeping the top more thinner overall. And trying to, we're making little branches, just do soft little, kind of shorter too, squiggly lines, little flicks coming out. Try to give it soft bends as well. Sometimes shorter ones. Overlap is good too. Okay, so this brown, if you want to add this brown anywhere else, if you want to add a little bit of this brown into and accent any parts of your existing little sticks and trees, maybe this Naples yellow, it will pop it out a little bit more, give it more dimension. And I'm just going around the edges, complementing the color. Now it has, it kind of stands out a little bit more too. Um, not very noticeable into the darker color, so maybe I won't add too much of this in here. But worth it if you like the color and you want to just add in a little bit more of this color throughout. And I think I'm going to add a few more sticks with this color. Um, Actually, I have quite a bit going on, so I'll leave that up to you. I am going to be putting a bit more over here around this really dark part. So, but let's use something like this, but I'm going to just take yellow, let's put in our Naples yellow, yellow and red. Yellow and red, just a whole bunch of that right into the Naples yellow. And you get this like orange, you know, very orangey looking color, kind of fiery looking. So I'm going to just use a chunk of my paint and start twirling this in. Even though this is still a bit wet, this is actually just fine. Really mimicking the shape and the chaos that's happening in here. So you can keep working at that with um, more colors. I would take just plain red after on the same brush without washing it off and add in some more red if you want it to have more accents of red. Just here and there. Yeah, this is actually a painting that a ton of mixing, just a whole ton of it. So it's great practice, especially with natural, neutral tones, getting used to that. I like using this orangey color to give it more fiery look at the bottoms, just in case you want to add this in. It also adds more color too, so it's not only just orange, it complements your brown really, really well. <clears throat> so as we move forward to more of a dark chestnut brown again, 
and actually taking black, you can swirl in some of the black into in between and around into the empty spots to give it more darkness and deeper contrast between all of these little bundles of twigs, sticks. And swirl it. I'm going to just bring some of that down. Keeping it nice and dark at the bottom. But I would say with maybe your number zero if you want, but with a little bit of black, just along this line, not so perfectly. I just kind of work around things. Just a little extra line back here, should you want to add that in. And now we can switch to a chestnut brown, whenever that is done. More black, I already have some dark brown over here, so I'll just add more black to it. water, twirl my paintbrush in here, keep it nice and thin on the end. So I'm going to just outline, give it a bit more shape around my branches and this tree coming up. I like to do shorter lines as I do this. Just follow it up, do some short lines, not a full consistent line. You can add more branches onto it as well. each side of here. Put some in here too. I'm going to highlight this with more bright brown later. But let's get in in this area. We have more of a tree stem coming up. Kind of like a dead tree stem. I just kind of trail it along. off to the side, keep it a bit thinner at the top. I'm just gonna carry this a little bit thicker and then thinner so it's there. And I'm gonna do some little twigs sticking out, just kind of curling it, letting my wrist do a lot of the work where I'm not thinking too much on how it looks. Coming from this part here, you can do the same type of thing. So when you complement other browns with some dark and lighter browns, more contrast, I think it comes together really nicely overall. 
You can see more of the, the lines. So if I go over this one with some darker brown, it will pop out even more. I'm always adding more paint to my brush. Same with following up this tree. Okay, so just remember to take a step back from here. All of this little driftwood and everything that's kind of sticking out at the top of this canoe or dead tree and twigs, that is something you can add in, I would say, more towards the end. So if you don't want to add it in, you don't have to. But you can add it in and you just, you can always touch up on your water. It's just once you put it in, it's hard to work around. Um, let me see. Okay, so we're almost there. Okay, so it seems like it, this is one of our longer events, that's for sure. Uh, in terms of color for highlights and stuff like that, I would say pick colors that maybe you need to show more of. Like for me, uh, I think Naples yellow. Getting something with this yellow and maybe some more orange colors. I like those ones. I'm just going to stick mostly with those. I didn't want to touch blue there, but that's okay. Just some of that. And just to give it a bit more of a highlight. Makes this tree stand out even more. Lightly press. See how it gives it more of a highlight sticking out. And if it's too bright, just add a bit more brown into it. Just add a touch of brown to your Naples yellow. And you can add this lightly into your darker brown. Just very lightly. Nice color. Put some in back here. Okay. So what's actually nice is adding this highlight anywhere along any of your browns or even on your canoe. See, I just put a little highlight along the top.
let's stick with this Naples yellow to put in the extra twigs that are sticking up around here. Just touching up onto the bottom of this tree stump. Yeah, almost there. I want to take my orange one more time. Because I can put little twigs curling out down, kind of loose from this pile. Yeah. So last little touches. And you can show your results on our Facebook page. We'd love to see results. Take your time with this. Come back to it later if you need a break. Very long painting. Um, I'm just trying to think what else. We have a group that's actually on our Facebook page if you want to show them there too. I, I found that for the style of this, there's lots of brush strokes in here that you can see. So when putting it in, putting in your brush strokes, yep. not too much with blending. If I put some highlight here, I don't really try to blend it in. I just let it sit in different colors instead of just one color where the browns are. Helps with all of that depth that you're trying to put in and Gives it nice shadow and highlight at the same time. Going back to my Naples yellow for that cream color we've been using before. Let's put a little bit up here. So it's kind of interesting. It's got like a little bit of, first I'm gonna start with this little curve kind of sticking up and kind of flicking outwards. It's got these little twigs, very curvy. And it's supposed to be behind the other side of the boat. You might need to do a couple coats on it, which is totally fine. So when it's more dry, you can just touch over, give it some more coverage. And there is something coming in from the side here. Uh, I think I might opt out. I want to... Actually, no, I'm going to put it in. Coming from the corner. You can go right over top of your tree and then put it on top again so it's in front of it. Streak that out and then just make little twigs. Add on the side. Short little lines. went right over top of it and then I'm going to put this tree back in front again once that is done.
And it looks like a plant. An interesting plant in a way, but no, it's supposed to be more of a dead tree. That's just the way that I'm describing it as how it's kind of made. I want to add in some dark brown in here. Put some dark brown in coming up through that middle. Little accents of color like we've been doing before. And just like that, it kind of, instead of just being one solid color, now it has more dimension into it, more depth. Great. Same with over here if you want to put it in, but I kind of just did a couple little streaks down the middle, and I think I just left it alone. Or if you're feeling fancy, you want to add some more shadow into these guys. Let's go right over top here. Takes care of that. And that should mostly do it. Anything that you want to do for extra highlights, my tip is taking white and just a dot of yellow. And you don't need to add black to it because um, then you can get final highlights, say on the top parts of, oops, take this again, on the top parts of these trees up here. Like it's hitting more of that light to so just lightly touch up onto it. Not too much yellow because then it's just going to look yellow. Light yellow. Extra highlight. Should you feel like adding it in? And this tree right in front is obviously overlapping the one behind it. So I'm just going, making sure it's going right over top. Okay. So whenever you feel like you're done, walk away, step away from it. It's hard to stop. There's just so many things that you want to touch up on and finalize with color, highlights. Especially the orange in here. It's like the only bit of color that's really shining through. Maybe some orange onto the tree. And I think I'll leave it alone. All right. So that should complete that painting. The Canoe by Tom Thompson. Sign your painting. And show off your results on our Facebook page, your interpretation of it.
so many colors in this painting, so uh, there's going to be lots of variations. And if you're looking at the original, I wasn't, today I was not looking at the original, so I was mostly looking at how I, my interpretation of it, and um, it comes out a little bit different every time, so colors are slightly different too. But hopefully this was fun and hopefully relaxing as well. Not too difficult, lots of steps, but well worth it. Um, in terms of your boat, if you have to put a final line just outside, you can see just outside of your boat here on the other side where the water is, you can. Give it more of a outline here as it gets into the water. That's just with super dark blue, blue and black. It's just more defined there. And let's say a couple of highlights into your water. I like to add those in. Okay, so maybe you'll paint along with me again sometime. We have lots of paintings coming up free and paid on our website. You can see all of our other free paintings on our website, artistpalettedurham.com. So happy painting, everyone. Bye.